Okay, what I want to do is hypnotize you. Honestly, I really wish that I could do that. I really do want to hypnotize, well, not all of you. If you fully understand this subject and you're just here to find an easier way of explaining it to other people, then it's not you I want to hypnotize. But if you're here because you're really confused to ju about just how much air does need to be put in a lifting bag in order to get an object to neutral buoyancy, then it's you that I want to hypnotize. I want to hypnotize you in order for you to forget everything that you know about this subject. And I mean everything. It's not your fault that you don't understand this. I promise you, it's not you. You're the victim here. So during this lesson, I'm going to start by showing you just how simple and basic this really is. Even my sister can do this and she's not even a diver. But in order for you to see the simplicity, you need to forget everything and just go along with me step by step. Don't jump ahead, just stay with me all the way. There aren't many steps, it won't take long. Oh, and please do not take notes, especially for this first time that you watch this video. Just let it wash over you. And then afterwards, you can watch it again and take notes that time if you want to. So once we've seen how easy, it, how easy this is, I'm then gonna go on to try and explain to you why so many people struggle with it. And as usual, it's all to do with psychology. But I think it's important for you to know why people get confused so that in the future, when you're explaining it to other people, you can make sure that it's clear and your students don't get confused. So please hypnotize yourself right now. Forget everything. Okay, has it gone? Have you done it? Great. Okay, so I'm gonna start with an analogy. I want you to imagine a tug of war contest. So we've got two teams of equal things, people, cars, bulldozers, I don't care what, well, let's pick one, elephants. Okay, so we've got three identical elephants on each end of a rope. To start with, we can say that the ground is dead level. It's truly a level playing field. Now, all the elephants are equal. They're each using an equal amount of energy. Both teams are pulling. And of course, the rope isn't moving. It's neutral. Now, if we were to take one elephant off one side, immediately the rope moves over to the side with the more elephants. Now to make the situation neutral again, we can either replace the elephant to the weaker side or we could reduce an elephant on the other side. Whichever way we do it, we need the same number on each side and we're back to being neutral again. So we have two teams here. We could give, give these teams names. We could call this one the red one and this one the blue one, but that's boring. What I want to do is I want to call one team kilograms and I want to call the other team litres. So we've got kilos pulling in one direction and the litres team pulling in the other. And as long as the numbers are on each side are equal, the rope is neutral. Kilos, litres. <laughs> I told you it wouldn't take long. You probably don't realise it, but actually that's about everything. That's about it. So if a question was to ask... In a tug of war contest on level ground, if the kilo team had 69 elephants, gosh, 69 elephants. We're gonna need a very long rope, aren't we? Good job this is only in our imagination. Anyhow, so we've got 69 kilo elephants and the litres team have only got 47 elephants. So how many more elephants would need to be added to the litres team to bring it to neutral? Well, the answer of course is 69 minus 47 equals 22 litres elephants. The numbers in Paddy questions are the same. To get to neutral, they need to balance. We simply need to minus litres away from kilos and that's it. It's really that simple. Now stay with me, there's not much more. We just need to know what the referee would have to do in a competition if the ground wasn't level. Imagine that there's a slight slope. Let's imagine that the litres team had a bit of an advantage because they were pulling the kilo team slightly downhill. It would mean that the kilo team wouldn't seem quite as heavy. They'll feel a little bit lighter and easier to move. But how much lighter? We need to know how much lighter they would seem to be. Well, always, 
it's 1.03 times lighter. What, always, you might ask? Always 1.03? Yup, it's in the elephant tug of war rule book. It's written down. Either the ground is level or the kilo team will seem to be 1.03 times lighter. It's written down. Oh, and it's always the kilo team that will be lighter. That's in the rule book too. So if there is a slope, the kilo team will always seem to be lighter. It's always that way around. So the referees at the beginning of a tournament, they need to make sure that it's fair. So the first thing they need to do is know how many elephants there are in the kilo team. And then once they know that, they can then divide that number by 1.03 to find out how many elephants are allowed to be in the litres team. We know that there will be fewer, but how many? Well, if there's 69 elephants in the kilos team, the referee would divide 69 by 1.03. Now that comes to 66.99. So let's call it 67. That's as near as makes no difference. So with a slope, then 69 elephants on the kilo side, the referee would only allow 67 elephants on the litre side, and that would make it equivalent to being on level ground. So 69 on one side, a slope, 67 on the other, and this makes it neutral. The rope won't move. So we can now have another question. In a tug of war contest on a slope, if the kilo team had 69 elephants and the litres team only had 47 elephants, how many more elephants would need to be added to the litres team to bring it to neutral? And the answer would be 69 divided by 1.03, well that's 67, to make it, that would make it the same as it on level ground. Then minus uh, 47, 67 minus 47 equals 20. So why is this made out to be so difficult? Well, we would have understood it if it wasn't for those darn words that get in the way. Remember, whatever words are in the question, you must never forget that the numbers in the kilo team need to match the numbers in the litre team on level ground. And if it's on a slope, you just divide the kilo team numbers by 1.03 and then carry on as if it's on level ground. So why is this so difficult for some people? Well, when someone comes across a new subject, they're sometimes bombarded with words that confuse and complicate. Words that don't really make sense. And once that's happened, it can then leave a scar, which means that every time that person comes across that subject, they're reminded of the confusion. And we'll have a look at some of the examples of this very subject, and then you can really see what I'm talking about. Now bear in mind that this question I'm going to show you is the same as the one that we've seen earlier. And although it doesn't mention elephants, we do know that the answer is 22. So let's have a look at these examples. And as we read the words together, I want you to imagine that I'm a new learner. I've already been confused by previous questions and now I'm determined to crack this. I really need to understand it. So here we go. If an object weighs 69 kilos and displaces 47 litres of fresh water, how much more water needs to be displaced to bring the object to neutral buoyancy? Okay, well, straight off, I must admit that I don't understand this. I don't fully understand it at all. So I'm gonna take one bit at a time. I'm determined to understand it. An object weighs 69 kilos. Okay, I get that. I can imagine an object that's heavy and it's in water. I get that. Next. And displaces 47 litres of fresh water. What? The, the, hang on a minute. I just need to get my head around this. The object displaces water. So if I was to put it in a bath that's full of water, water would splash over the side. Oh, right. That's the Archimedes thing, isn't it? Yeah, I get it. So... All that spilt water, if we mopped it all up, that would add up to 47 litres. OK, uh, but hang on, the question says fresh water. Surely it would displace the same amount if it was in the sea, or in coffee, or tomato soup, or any liquid. Oh, I'm confused. Uh, any, anyway, let, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. How much more water needs to be displaced to bring the object to neutral buoyancy? What? 
Let's do that again. How much more water needs to be displaced to bring the object to neutral buoyancy? Oh, I give up. This is ridiculous. I've got no idea. I've got no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't even understand the words in the question. Well, it's a good job that I already know from the elephant question that the answer's 22. I mean, that one seemed a lot easier. Okay, both this question and the elephant question, they're both the same. There is no difference apart from words. Both sides of the tug of war need to balance. So the answer is 22 litres. Either 22 more elephants to the litres team in the first question or 22 litres of displaced water in the second. They're both just the same. So you can answer these questions. You can answer without truly understanding the underlying physics. But actually, it does help to know why it's the answer. Not only so you can pass this over to your future students, but also because you're aware that Paddy have a habit of changing words in their questions. And in a moment, we're going to look more closely at these word changes. But for now, let's get a few simple facts. Um, one, uh, like one litre of fresh water, that weighs one kilogram. So imagine that you're an instructor and you're teaching a search and recovery course in a lake. Your student has attached a lifting bag to an object and then your student proceeds to squirt small bursts of air into that lifting bag. Now each litre of air will displace one litre of water. Each displaced litre of water weighs one kilogram. Your student will continue to put small bursts of air into the bag until the object starts to move. And at that point, when it starts to dance around the bottom, it's neutrally buoyant. And that's precisely the point where the tug of war numbers are equal. So comparing with our original example, if your student is recovering a 69 kilogram weight, well, 69 kilograms might be a bit heavy for search and recovery. I think the maximum is 45 kilograms, isn't it? I think it is. But I want to stick with our original example. So we can imagine that the object your student uh, is recovering weighs 69 kilos. Now, when the total number of displaced litres is also 69, the object will be neutral. Now, we knew that the object naturally displaced 47 kilos. Uh, litres. So once your student puts 22 litres of air into the lifting bag, they will get lift off. And that lift off means two things. One is that it's neutrally buoyant. It also means that we can bring it safely to the surface. And those two things lead us to some paddy wording warnings. What I'm going to do now is show you exactly the same question that we've seen before. One more time I'm going to show you. This time it's got some paddy word variation. Remember, this is exactly the same question that we've seen before. It's in fresh water. We know the answer is 22. So let's see how many different ways that paddy can ask a simple question. So here we go. If an object weighs 69 kilos and displaces 47 litres of fresh water, A, how much more water needs to be displaced? Or B, how much more air needs to be added to a lifting bag? These two are the same thing. There's no difference between those two. And now, C, to bring the object to neutral buoyancy. Or D, to bring the object to the surface. Again, as far as Paddy questions are concerned, these two things mean the same thing. You've probably come across all of these permutations already in your journey so far. Now, the good news, especially with A and B, is that we, we can look at this as very good news because they're both in litres. We're both working with a litres team. It doesn't really matter if it's litres of water, litres of air. They're all litres and so they all belong on the litres team. So the answer to the question isn't affected. Another variation could be if a diver weighs 69 kilos and is neutrally buoyant in fresh water, how much water does he or she displace? And the answer is 69 litres. I guess that you're getting the idea now. If an object weighs 69 kilos and is lying in 20 metres of fresh water, etc., this is a red herring. The depth is not important at all. In the same way that if the elephants were having a tug of war at the top of a mountain or the bottom of a valley, it makes no difference at all. So if you see depth mentioned in a displacement question, you can usually ignore it. So let's just practice with a couple of typical questions. 
The first one is in seawater, which I'm sure you've already guessed is the same as being the tug of war on a slope. Now I've made this question a bit wordy on purpose, just to prove that you can deal with anything that's thrown at you by now. So here we go. An object weighs 35 kilos and, live, and lies in 15 meters of salt water. It displaces 12 liters of water. How much more air needs to be displaced to bring the object to neutral buoyancy? Okay, let's go through this step by step. Number one, ignore the 15 meters, it's a red herring. Number two, divide 35 by 1.03 to make it equal. 35 divided by 1.03 is 33.98. Now we can proceed as if it's on a level playing field. In other words, as if it's in fresh water. So 33.98 minus 12 is 21.98. So the answer is 21.98 of liters, either of air or water displaced. And we're going to do one more question, just so that we can show off a little bit. Now this one is in freshwater, so it's on a level playing field. If an object weighs 60 kilos, it displaces 40 litres of freshwater. How much more water needs to be displaced to bring the object to neutral buoyancy? Well, as usual, we're simply going to deduct the litres from the kilos. 60 minus 40 equals 20. There's your answer. OK, that's it. I hope that's helped. Oh, sorry, I forgot you're still hypnotised, aren't you? OK, I'm going to count backwards. Three, two, one, and back in the room. As usual, <laughs> in the next section, I've added some questions here. See how you get on, but I'm sure that you'll fly through these now without any problems. Look forward to see you soon in the next lesson.